All right, welcome back, everyone, for another fun topic. Top five military conquerors in history, right? So I've kind of covered some of these other top fives. And as always, I'd like it when you guys like and share these videos and uh, leave comments on what you think. Do you agree with these top five? Would you have put somebody else in there? Obviously, in any time of these top lists, there's a lot of different ideas and views on most of them. Uh, so I'm always kind of enjoy reading the comments on all that. So feel free to leave any. So let's just get right to it. Who is number one or who's number five? Sorry. Uh, so number five, we'll start with Cyrus the Great. And this is going back a bit in time, 550 B.C., um, and he conquers a lot of land. Basically, this is the Persian emperor. Everything you see on this map that's in green represents territory of Cyrus. So we're talking about a lot of territory here, all the way from, you know, bordering India, all the way to Asia Minor and Greece. Oh, it doesn't get to Greece, but northern Greece, Macedonia there, area north of Greece. Um, and not all of it is conquered by Cyrus. There's some of this that's conquered by his uh, people who follow him, but a good chunk of it is. And the way he does it is what's interesting. Unlike a lot of conquerors in history, he doesn't force people to assimilate. He basically tells people, hey, be part of the Persian Empire and you can keep your own customs, your own traditions, your own way of life. Yes, you still have to pay taxes to the Persian Empire, but heck, everyone's got to pay taxes to somebody. Um, and so I think his method of conquering is very is significant in terms of what allowed him to conquer so much land fairly quickly. I have a bit of a longer lecture that I do on the Persian Empire and Cyrus, and you can kind of watch that if you want on my channel as well. Uh, but definitely, Cyrus is a pretty important guy. All right, who's number four? So for number four, I picked a man that a lot of people may not consider because it doesn't conquer a tremendous amount of land. He does take over some, obviously. Uh, Mehmet II, uh, he was an Ottoman sultan in 1450, circa 1450 AD. And you can see on our map here, you know, the Ottoman Empire, a lot of the areas you see in orange here is areas he's going to conquer. So areas of Greece um, and some other regions that you could see on the map here. So he almost doesn't quite, but almost doubles the size of the Ottoman Empire. But there's a little piece of real estate he takes over. And it's not a lot of land, but it is so significant that I, I kind of put him up here. And that is the city of Constantinople. So Constantinople, you probably can't read it there, but that is the center of what was, you know, the Byzantine Empire. First, the city was called Byzantium, then it becomes known as Constantinople. And then in 1453, when Mehmet II conquers it, it becomes known as Istanbul. And it becomes the center of the Ottoman Empire. It's still a very major city in modern day Turkey. It's not the capital of modern day Turkey, but it's still a major city there. And it becomes this global hub in a lot of respects. And I think it was also very challenging to conquer it. You know, the thing is with Constantinople, it was very well defended. And it's in many ways kind of this place with such a variety of different people and different cultures and different religions. And therefore, to take it over and then maintain it was not an easy feat. So I think, you know, in that sense, I, I, I put him up there in one of the top fives. And again, I know there are many other people you could consider. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll go through a few more and then I'll tell you maybe a couple others that I thought of. Uh, but let's go to number three. The next one's pr the next few, I think, are going to be pretty obvious. Number three, Napoleon. Uh, you know, Napoleon, of course, around 1800 AD, just a fascinating life story. You know, I tell my students that I think you can take every Hollywood writer together, put him in a room, and they won't come up with a life story as crazy as Napoleon in terms of where he started on this little island of Corsica, becoming this massive, you know, uh, powerful individual running through most of Europe very quickly and then ending his life on a tiny little miserable island in the South Atlantic. Uh, it's just a crazy story. But... Napoleon is obviously very well uh, versed in military strategies. He, you know, I think one of his most famous battles, the Battle of Austerlitz that he fights. And in that battle, uh, he's completely outnumbered and he wins. And so he, he wins victories when he's outnumbered. And I think one of the reasons I put him in my top five as well is because he had a reputation of really being a motivational figure for his 
troops, right? That, you know, there's one little story that if he tugged on your ear as a, as a soldier, that'd be such a great respect. Um, and so he was very much loved by his troops and uh, he was very successful in taking over a good chunk of real estate, of course, until he decided to invade Russia in the winter and then that went downhill for him. Uh, and of course, there's a lot more material I have with Napoleon on my longer lectures that I do for my students, but definitely one of the top five conquerors in history. All right, who's number two? Well, Genghis Khan will go all the way, or sometimes called Genghis Khan. Uh, so sometimes I've seen his name spelled C-H uh, starting. And of course, he is ruler of Mongolia. And again, you could see in terms of real estate, I, I mean, I, I point this out to my students. You could see, you know, where it says Europe here. And you go, wow, that's kind of the size of roughly the Roman Empire. And I'm close to that and it dwarfs the Roman Empire. So in terms of real estate, this is amazing. And with Genghis Khan, you know, I think his big thing is just the psychological warfare he used, the, the, the cavalry forces he used. I mean, these guys could just ride on horses and shoot with these composite bows and, you know, developing um, armor that was basically silk that could absorb an arrow blow really well. Uh, and, and so all of these kind of new fighting techniques he used and, um, you know, pushing very aggressively to, to take over and used a lot of psychological warfare, I think, very effectively to conquer a lot of land. Uh, so there's a lot of information I have him about him as well in one of my other longer lectures on Genghis Khan. Uh, but he was very effective in taking over a lot of land. And so who's number one on my list? Well, Alexander. Uh, you know, Alexander the Great, first of all, the guy was just a kid. He was like 18, 19 years old when he starts his conquest. And you could see he, you know, bigger than what the Persian Empire was because he does control all of Greece and he gets all the way towards India, Egypt and everything. And he does all this in a fairly short amount of time. I think one of the most impressive things about Alexander is how fast, like you see the area in purple, he conquers all that in about a two year period. And it takes him about another two year period to conquer all of Mesopotamia over here. And then it takes him about another four years to get all the way to India. And he's doing this, he's, you know, he's f moving his troops, you know, it's believed that his troops would march about 30 miles in a day. And, you know, and I tell my students, if you ever go hiking, you know, and you go on a five, 10 mile hike, you feel pretty worn out. These guys are going 30 miles a day. And in between, they have to forge for food and fight battles. And um, he wins, you know, one battle after the other. And, you know, one of the things about him, like a lot of these other individuals I mentioned as well, he's always in the front lines of fighting. You know, you see mosaics of Alexander and he's right there in the front leading the battles and, and, and leading the fighting right there. Uh, so he, he defeats the Persian emperors. He takes over Egypt. Uh, he, he establishes cities. You know, he wasn't bashful. He establishes like 20 new cities and he names them all Alexandria. The Alexandria is, of course, the one in Egypt and northern Egypt. Uh, so he wasn't bashful and he took over a lot of land. And it's a name that pretty much everybody knows. It's a household name even today. Uh, so I think that tells you in terms of his conquest, how important he is. So anyways, those are my top five. You know, hopefully you found them all pretty interesting. And I have some of these I have longer lectures about, of course. And I have a, my whole list of other top, you know, five things in, in history, inventions and, and people and uh, kind of fun things to think about. Just type five events in Western civilization history, my top five novels of, of historical things. And you can kind of look at that at this little playlist that I'll put up for you as well. All right, everyone. So I hope you find that some interesting things to think about. Uh, please leave comments in the in the comment section. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you.